Hi everybody, my name is Paul Apps and welcome back to my painting channel. Now on a sunny day just like today, I love nothing more than to get out with my paints and do a plein air somewhere. And I like to take you guys along for that little adventure as well. So today is no exception, but instead of going off in the van as I would normally do to do a painting, I felt that I wanted to make the subject of this video going light or at least traveling light and taking less so that you can achieve just as much and have lots of fun without bogging yourself down with tons and tons of gear. Now we're going to go out on the cycle and you know that I got this e-bike very recently and I, instead of sort of packing it down with all the paints that I can possibly carry, uh, I felt that I just wanted to travel light. So I'm not going to go through all the kit and caboodle at this stage. I'm just going to set off and take you with me and see where we end up. Catch you all soon. Hi everybody, welcome back. Now we have traveled about a mile and a half, two miles. We are right by a road again, unfortunately. The cycle is parked up and what we're gonna be doing is that fort. Now what you're looking at, and the locals among you will know exactly what this is. This is a Napoleonic fort. Now I say Napoleonic, it was created by the Duke of Wellington as a defense against the threat from Napoleon Bonaparte back in the day and it was the center hub for all the defenses around the Romney marshes of which there were no end of them and they were all hand dug the ditch was hand dug or the river uh, the Royal Military Canal as it's so called and all the firing points but it was all administered from this point here this was the fort where they were billeted and where guns were situated now I don't know how much of this is original and how much has been built on during the first or possibly even the second world wars. I'm sure this is not how it was um, originally constructed. I think there's been additions added to this. Now it's in disrepair and it is owned by the MOD of course and you can see the red flag flying which indicates that there is firing on the ranges beyond this point. But it's a lovely fort and I felt that it would be uh, a great subject to uh, do our first painting of. So there we go. Now let's get back to what I was saying. And that is I was going to be traveling light. So what do I mean by traveling light? Well, I don't know if you are like me, but when you get uh, the idea to go out and do some plein air, then you take everything, the kitchen sink, the whole nine yards with you and inside it is all the supplies I need. Copious amounts of watercolor paper, I've got enough there for a year. Water and my paints and brushes and my pens and drawing equipment, that's all I need. Indeed, if I take a little bit of this out, I can put a small oil uh, setup in there as well, no bigger than that, in which case I can do some four by six oils as well. So I could actually come out here with about half a dozen different mediums in one little bag and therefore not have to take so much with me. I found or discovered something called a fude, fudu, <laughs> I can't even say, fude, fude, Japanese or Chinese fude nib. And what a fude nib is, is where the nib is literally bent at right at the end. I don't know if this will pick it up, but if it does, that's what it is. 
Now that nib is quite a wonderful because they call it an italic writing nib. In other words, you can press it to the end and get a very thin line and you can press it quite thickly uh, and create a wide line by laying down the nib closer to making more contact with the paper. Now both of these pens are um, have got a siphon on them and this one you have to buy the siphon extra but both of them are able to be siphoned. This is another company. This one is a company called Sailor and um, it's a well recognized company. Again I bought this one from Pure Pens. Now Sailor do a much cheaper one I think about £11 something like that from Pure Pens. Uh, this is £24 and the reason is it, it to me it's a little bit more like this stronger stronger plastic and bulkier in my hand so I went for the more expensive one but the nib is identical now the ink I use for this is called the Atramentis ink it's a document ink you can buy an archival ink both of them are waterproof inks and they will be able to be used in a fountain pen but what I wanted to do was literally get on and have a little play a little sketch maybe add some color to that later on and uh, as I say whether you call this urban sketching or whether you just call this plein air it really doesn't make a lot of odds now you can do this two ways I'm going to probably just go on one sheet of paper because it's a little easier to control at the moment but you can either do a basic drawing in pencil and uh, may do that a little later for you or you can actually um, just go straight in as I'm going to be doing here and drawing directly to the paper so my fort is up on a mound and I want to put it quite high up in the paper so I'm just going to literally put a line through there which suggests uh, the it's not my horizon line my horizon line I'll be looking into the dirt because the ground goes up upon me and it then comes down on this side so we're going to come up like that and then it starts to come down over here towards the coast and the sea now for the structure of the building and it is a multifaceted um, unit put that through there there's lots as I say there are so many angles on this now I also said to you that my hill is not going to yield enough room to put my um, tower in the tower is about there <laughs> so that's not going to go in unfortunately but to me it should be in I should have started over here to be fair and it may be that I will have another go but uh, yeah the the tower should be about there I might just yeah, I might just cheat heck what the hell let's go in for it and let's just put our tower in it shouldn't be where it is but it is going to go right there uh, artistic license I think they call this there you go so there's our tower and it is very tall we can only see the underside of the roof and the front part of the roof as it goes back down and away and then there is a very dark area here I'm guessing
Now you can see by tipping that down like that, you can get a very big thick mark with your pen. And like here, I can put that line through there, all the way through there. This is that big open front. And look, I can put some wonderful thick marks down. It can really be very, very expressive. I can be Right, so that gives us our security fencing and then we've got a bit of concrete walling through here which is just the back end of the sea defences. I think we've done enough of our sketch. We can put in one or two lovely little bits of detail suggesting grasses. And there's a lot of rough ground here. People walk their dogs through this area and it does cascade. There's a big curvature of it. This whole area is set in its own ground. I don't know this is going to work out. Sometimes you do something you wish you hadn't started. <laughs> the idea of this was to have a whole load of um, rooks and crows that live here flying around. I don't know if I've messed this up or not, but you can be the judge. There you go. Just a whole load of birds. You, they just come up in a big flock all of a sudden, and um, they're there. All right, I'm going to let this dry off, put the pen away, look at my watercolour, and just put some quick washes to this and then we'll pack up move on and go somewhere else so my watercolors this is my little watercolor kit and in it is everything that i need to do a full watercolor or a small one so i have my leather pouch i have this is my watercolor tin now this is based on an old design i'm not sure who originated the design i know modern versions from windsor and newton other companies in plastic based their designs on this look but it's just a compact set this was made I am... well i was talking about this and i have no idea at what point the camera shut off but i lost some footage anyway just a quick recap, this was a beautiful little uh, set that I found on a well-known uh, auction site 
and I, it was actually suggested that it was made by a, um, an apprentice in his final year in Manchester on the shipping uh, side of things and this was a piece that he had made. I believe the advert suggested it was in the light, late 1920s, 1929, something like that. It's very old, it's an old brass and enamel set, but it serves me well. And I really did enjoy finding that. So with that bit done, we have some water and we have our little container. And there we are, we are set to paint. All right, now, because I am sitting on a concrete platform, I am able to put that to one side or at least the water put that to one side on this occasion quickly the brushes that I'm using are from Rosemary and Company these are her travel set not all of them are the full range I have just a few of them but they are lovely brushes and that one is what is a rigger put that back in don't need that one today I must find a way of marking these actually so I know what's inside that's a nice thick round brush we'll use that one we're going to dip the water, we're going to look at our picture and we're just going to come in and we are going to put some sky in I think. Should have cleaned some of this off but I think it will work. I'm going to put in a nice sort of pale yellowish colour using whatever's in the bottom here. So for our foreground, let us just come in with some of this green violet color, use some of that up, and I'm just going to suggest it on some of the side -ish, shady side, I can't even say it, shady side, we're gonna add a little bit more lemon to that just to excite that green. Everybody, welcome back. I have no idea what happened then. The camera froze at some point during the course of that painting and I have no idea how much of that painting was filmed or lost. And not until I get home anyway. And if you're seeing this, then obviously I felt when I looked at it that uh, there was enough to make a film of it for you to enjoy. And I hope you do, despite the fact that some of the footage was lost. It does bring me to another point that when you're out and about and you're trying to film a plein air, there's so many other factors up above painting. I mean, painting is one thing, but to film it and get everything set up right, to record everything in the way that you would like it, without something going wrong, seems to be eluding me. I have practiced this a few times, and I've changed things at different times, and many times I've done it, and you guys don't get to see the film because it was absolutely useless, and the footage was bad. So, this may be amongst them, uh, or it may be you get to see it, but at least you'll understand that if it doesn't quite go to plan, it's not such a big deal. I keep practicing, keep experimenting, and hopefully at some point in the future, you get to see a film without a problem. So anyway, catch you all soon. I'm gonna pack up, get moved on to somewhere else and have another go. Catch you all soon, bye-bye.
Hi everybody, and welcome. <laughs> Start again then. Hi everybody. Am I recording or not? It's a sunny day to get out and do some planet and take you all on a on 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 a planet adventure. <laughs> Start again then. Now on a sunny day, I love no more, no more. Well, I do like lots more. <laughs> Let's start that again then. What I felt that I would do is travel light. So what I'm going to be doing, I can get this to spin round if it wants to. Come on. Hi everybody, my name is... <laughs> can't sing either. Now, on a sunny day like today, I love no more ex... No? Start again then. <laughs> I'm not going to get going anywhere at this rate. 